Get off the right wheel. I want you to look to your neighbor and say, wake up. Wake up. I'm not talking about the sleep wake up, because if they sleep, they need to leave. If they sleep, tell them to go home. Look to your neighbor and say, wake up. I'm talking school days in the courtyard. Wake up! Ah, that's about 36%. Somebody way in the back still doesn't get this. We have everything we need. It's all here. Wake up! I was sent a message a long time ago. Let me tell you the story. I realized God had put me here for a reason. Some of you right now, you are not experiencing the best of your business because you're not working within your purpose. You look at the leaders in the front row and say, man, they must be super special. They can do all this. They're brave. They're, they're top producers. They're millionaires. Some of you look at them and say, I'm not them yet. You're not working within your purpose right now. Many of you may have heard some of my story, but you don't know the real deal. I come from one of the worst cities for crime in the United States. The murder rate where I'm from is above countries that are at war. Let me put this in perspective for you because a lot of you, some of y'all don't know me. Some of y'all been in the business. I remember when I first came to my first national event, y'all thought I was, was Tashina's security guard. And it's okay because I don't need the shine. I strayed away from coming to the stage for many years. But understand, when you start working your purpose, you gotta realize sometimes it's time to step up. But let me share with this message real quick, and this is not to scare you guys, but I gotta come from a, a, a true point. I was about 15 years old. I was walking home from school, had a couple of buddies with me. Where, when I have to walk home from school, I can take the long way to avoid the gangs. As about, somebody knows what I'm talking about, as about a half a mile to my walk. But this particular day, I had a couple of guys with me in the neighborhoods where the gangs were. I played ball with some of those guys, so I felt like I was safe. I said, they ain't going to bother me. We just play ball together. So I cut through. As I'm walking through this neighborhood, I spot a family member. I'm not going to say who she is, but it's a family member. I don't see her all the time, but I saw her this day. She's screaming. I'm like, what is going on? So as I'm going up, I see that there is an altercation. Come to find out her boyfriend is getting jumped. This family member. This ain't an associate. This ain't something you walk past and say, oh, that'd be all right. It's not something where you say, this ain't my problem. It's family. I got a few guys with me, but at the time when the altercation was going on, I looked to my left and to my right, I didn't see my guys. Ah, some of y'all going through this right now, but you don't get it yet. But it's not on them, it's my family member. Whose family is it? So I, I walk up, I say, what's going on? She says, please help. They're jumping him. It's so many people, I can't tell that it is all these guys on one guy. As I remember, it's about six guys on one. I took a deep breath. Started thinking, man, if I go home, I got to deal with my dad. That I didn't help him. If I jump in there, this might be my last walk home. And I'm thinking to myself, which one is worse? Death now or death later? But I'm telling you what happened next. She begged me. She said, please help. Please help. And I said, oh my gosh, I got to jump in there. Now, 15 years old, don't, don't, I'm, I'm city champ wrestler. I feel like I can handle my own against one, maybe two, not six. Are you with me? I'm skilled, but I'm not, I'm not He-Man, right? So as I get there, it starts to get crazy. Took a couple down. But eventually, punches started coming from places I couldn't see. Eventually, I hit the ground. 
Hmm. When I hit the ground, I started to feel kicks. I started to feel stuff being thrown, getting hit with stuff. I black out for a little bit and I come right back and I realize I'm getting beat up, but it doesn't really hurt. <laughs> y'all, y'all, if y'all never get jumped, just take my word for it. I learned how to cover up the parts that matter and it hit me in like my shoulder, my leg. <laughs> it doesn't really hurt. The big thing that I was so scared of when I got into the mess, it didn't really hurt. And I said, they're going to get tired in a minute and leave. Boom, boom, hitting me, kicking me. And I'm like, let me just cover my head up, say I'll mess up my face. I don't want a Timberland footprint on my head, right? And I said, I'm going to cover my ribs up a little bit because, you know, the rib hurt. They hurt a little bit. Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. And then eventually it was over. My cousin looked at me and said, listen, I owe you everything because they were going to kill him. They had no intentions on stopping. You at least slowed them down and you stopped them. And I realized that day it wasn't my day to die. I realized that day God took me through that to wake up who I was really supposed to be. Because there was a coward in me that wanted to walk by. It was also a coward in me that was scared to face my dad. That turned me into a temporary hero for that moment, a quick moment. When I went, and I said, I'm going to go knock these guys. Mm. Oh, my gosh. They hit back. <laughs> in my mind, I didn't factor in the, they going to hit me too. I want you guys to understand right then, I realized at that moment and several other key moments in my life that God needs me to be here for a reason. I spent a lot of time from that day forward trying to figure out what that reason was but not giving up on one thing because I knew there was a reason. I've seen so many guys get into that situation and never come back. I just saw on the news today, today, this morning, 10-year-old girl got beat to death at school. Some of y'all saw that on CNN this morning. 10 years old, fifth grade, she got in a fist fight and died. Today I'm telling you, you are here for a reason. There's a purpose for what you're doing. I want you to connect that purpose that you are searching for and right now apply it to your business. We got some, some, some stuff we got to fix. Is that okay? But we got some blessings already here. I want you to look at this. When I say wake up, I want you to wake up. I want you to understand. Right now, in your hands, you pay, how many pay $50 or 150 bucks to, for your Nationals ticket? Show of hands, anybody paid for the National ticket? Did you know that right now, anybody pay $249, $500, over $1,000 to be into, into, into this opportunity, into filings? Anybody pay some money to get into the opportunity? You know you bought into a $22 billion opportunity? Hmm. Did you know that in the midst of all of our struggle, Nelson walked up to a few of us and said he has Project X. I've got Project X. <laughs> this is going to be huge. <laughs> We're going to change the industry. I can't see Nelson's face right now, so I'm not going to look over there, right? <laughs> now, me, I'm a natural skeptic, but I'm a believer in my purpose, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm torn. Anybody here the same way? I, I was unfamiliar with what Project X was, what CBD is. I was unfamiliar with all of that. There were things in my, in my history, in my past, that says, no, that's bad. Don't do that. But as I got educated, I said, ooh, this is helping people. Maybe my purpose is to help people. Maybe I can tie this into who I am. And then things started happening. At the time when that Project X came out, guess what happened? We were in a very low place in our business. We needed something. I thank God for Project X. I thank God for CBD. I thank God for all of my Five Links family. Because without us, there is no Project X. So I want you guys to remember this. We have something special. We have the ability. I'm, I'm going to give you some of my closing techniques towards the end of this presentation. Anybody want to just, you want to close the deal? Ah, a few of y'all want to close. Anybody in the back, you want to close the deal? You want to? Yeah. But one of those things right now I'm just going to touch on, we have the ability to do the traditional business. We can build teams, yes? Yeah. 
Shout out to Trevor and Shirley Thompson. Have a great team. They just got promoted to senior vice president. Yes, let's give it up for them. Excellent job at building a team. They followed the blueprint laid out and said, let's just do it. Let's just apply us into that format. But now we have the ability to wholesale. Ladies and gentlemen, wake up. This is a completely different opportunity than anything we've had before. The margins in our products open us up to people who didn't want to do MLM. The calls I'm getting now are not saying, hey, Kurt, can I join your team? It's, hey, how can I get a piece of CBD? They don't care about me. Guess what? It takes all the pressure off of me. Ooh. If they don't do well, it's their fault because CBD is booming. I want you to get this. Now we have the ability to wholesale. Stop taking this business as just a regular MLM. This is a bionic opportunity now. <laughs> Kirk just said this. The media is doing the work for us. All I do is wake up and Google something. I'm like, oh, I'm going to forward this out. Yeah, hello, how can I help you? Yep. 550, get started. It's going to give you $700 worth of product. You have to be there to you in about three, four days. Absolutely. Once you get there, we'll get you off the ground. We have a, a, a grand opening event for you. At that event, you're going to sell a lot of product. You're going to actually find other people who want to become wholesalers. Huh. A lot of people might think that, that oh, I'm just a wholesaler that's looking for other wholesalers. Do you know that they're just doing an MLM? But it's okay because now I have the opportunity to do both. I can wholesale. I can find other wholesalers. I can build a team. It's simple math. Don't make this too complicated. And everybody's going to use this stuff. Show a hand. Stand up if, if you have pain. If you have inflammation, stand up. If you have stress or you ever had it, stand up. All my people in the front row, if you got to do a presentation up here and you suffer from anxiety, <laughs> clap it up, right? Everybody in the room is standing up. Guess what that means? You can sit back down. Guess what that means? Everybody's going to need this product. It just went from a great business opportunity, now it's a necessity. When we built these multi-million dollar empires, we built it off of necessities. Our pitch was these are things that people are going to do every single day no matter what. But guess what? As the business evolved, the core stayed the same. People are still going to need to use these products every single day. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. And the game plan is simple now, y'all. You can go through all the training in the world, but there's no training necessary when you're just a sample in the product. If you don't have several sachets, if you don't have several of those right now, you're just practicing. You didn't come here to build a business. You're just practicing. I have a business builder. I have a, a, a subscription every single month, like clockwork, a subscription hits my doorstep. I can't lose. Some of y'all worry about how many points it is. You worried about the customer club instead of worried about getting rich. I'm gonna tell you what you don't need, to, what you don't want to hear, what you need to hear. Don't step over a million dollars trying to pick up hundred dollars a month. I don't need you to like me. I just need you to, I need you to go with you when you leave. Don't step over that, that, that million trying to get that 100 bucks a month. I can give handshakes and high fives to the corporate guys all I want, but understand, my kids are going to need even more than that. Wake up. Somebody's got to tell you the truth. I'm, I'm okay with being the bad guy. Is that all right? But then we got some obstacles. I want you to think about this. Anybody here ever had an issue where you missed a bonus? Raise your hand. Make some noise if you ever missed a bonus. My hand is up. Ooh, does it hurt when you just missed a bonus? I remember missing a, a 100 rep SVP bonus by one rep. The cutoff was midnight. He called me at 12.03. I said, what are you doing? Do you know how much? And I said, my bad. Let me get you in the system, brother, all right? I had to catch myself because he doesn't know the bonus I'm going for. Yes or yes? Rejection. Now, y'all are good with rejection. Y'all can handle that fine, right? 
Uh, somebody right now, after all the training you got from all the top leaders right here, you're going to get punched in the mouth with rejection and you're going to give up. And then you're going to get hyped up about 30 days before the next national show up all over again. You got to break the cycle. At some point, they're just going to say no. Only thing between the people who get started and the people who don't is the ones who say yes, get a check. That's it. I keep it moving. Show of hands if you are over rejection. You have no more fear of rejection. You are ready to go for it. But then the objections get a little bit tougher. Some of y'all here with your, your biggest objection right now that she's sitting or he's sitting next to you. Oh, I'm going to talk to somebody today. I told you today I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Hug them tight, Shirley. I see you. Some of you try to go out to work the business and it's your husband or your wife your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your family, they hold you back. You're going to have to figure that out. You're going to have to have that conversation today, not tomorrow, today. Say, listen, in order for me to get to my blessings, in order for us to provide for this family, I'm going to have to go out and work my business. Somebody in the back still don't get it. You're going to get home and you're going to be okay with, you know, my, my, my husband has his ways. My wife don't want me to turn that service on. Where's Larry Harper? Hey, Larry, it's unacceptable. I'm going to tell you, Larry, in this business, you have TV. If you need help, put me on a three-way. I'll talk to her. I got you. You got me. Let's do this together. You will have TV. It is not an option. I ain't scared of none of y'all. Everybody gets TV. We going to love TV until it loves us back. Ah, but then it gets even worse, y'all. As you work in the business, your team stops doing what they're supposed to do. Oh, Lord. If I had a nickel for every time my team didn't live up to my silly expectation, of what I think they should do for my dream. Oh my gosh, I'd be a billionaire. Guess what, y'all? It's your dream. It's not their dream. They're going to walk into their purpose eventually, but until they do, guess what? Keep going. If your idea of being successful is getting on the phone and trying to rally the same people that haven't done nothing for the last five years, you are insane. You need to hear it, but you don't want to hear it. It hurts bad. Ooh. But he's almost at SVP. I don't care where he is. He ain't show up today. Somebody's watching this on Facebook Live, and they mad. They just hit the end button. I ain't watching him no more. I had a legitimate excuse why I ain't show up. Excuses. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Listen, y'all. Then I hear the craziest of all. If we just had this one more product. Are you kidding me? Right now, are you kidding me? If we had Kurt, if we just had that, when are we going to get the, once we get that, I'm going to, man, quit. Quit. If you are living and breathing and you realize that CBD is going to be a $22 billion industry within the next three years, guess what? And we are on our path right now. We had a 12-month head start on the competition. We got everything we need. We have the best product portfolio in the industry, and you are still waiting for one more product. It ain't the product. It's you. As my grandmother used to tell me when I walked out the house, tell them I said it. My grandmother's five foot three. I'm gonna tell you right now, she was a giant in my house. Tell him I said it. Ah, right, here you go, here we go. I'm gonna really talk to somebody right now. You're in the audience right now. You, you paid your money. You stayed in the hotel, you bought the ticket, you invested, and you're blaming your upline that didn't do something right. If I get another call saying, Kurt, can I do this because my upline doesn't do it. Listen, 
if your upline is sitting in this row, that row, whatever row, guess what? They did something right. Humble yourself and follow the system. If you think you're going to call me to go against her, to go against him, to go against her, it ain't happening. Call me at 8 Curry. If I was on, listen, you're on the right team. You got the wrong upline. I ain't talking about the person. I'm talking about this one. You ain't really focused. We all only got one upline if you really want to take it there. But you're sorry, so worried about the way somebody does something. They did it the best way they possibly could, and they're trying to show you. You work with it. And there's some of y'all going to say, man, the prospect. Whew. I'm going to give you some stats. Not since last national, but since January. I've been away from my home a lot. Atlanta, five or six times. New York, three or four times. I've been to Philly. I've been to Virginia Beach 12 times. That's three and a half hours away from my house. I've done events in Baltimore. That's an hour and a half away from my house at least 12 times since the last national. I've been to places that I don't even remember the names of these places. I've been in your homes and some of y'all ain't clean up when I came. told my wife, I said, something was moving in the kitchen and it wasn't a rep. But the problem you're going to have is you're going to get through all of that and the prospect's going to tell you, well, you know, in my city, you know, people here, they will say, people in New York, man, they, they, they you know, they ain't, they ain't going to get on this. All right, okay. Then you go to Atlanta, man, you know, people in Atlanta, man, they, they take their time with things, man, they ain't going to jump on this. Okay. Then I get to Philly, you know, we, we in Philly, man, we got hardworking people here, man, they ain't, they ain't gonna re they not ready, right? You know, it's the people. Man, do you understand every city I go to, somebody's getting started and somebody's not. Nothing changes. It's always an excuse. It's always a reason. Why? It's all, always a reason. Why not? Guess who's making excuses? You are. If you tell yourself it's the people, no, it's you. I never said, man, listen, if Baltimore had just another 500,000 people, man, I'd be, I'd be hitting another bonus. <laughs> people in New York City say, you know, I got to find the right people. It's 8 million people. Just go outside. Are you with me? At some point, we got to take ownership in this. But we got to overcome our obstacles, y'all. I'm about to get heavy in this, and I, I want you to understand. I was running in my community the other day. Called my wife. Texted my wife while I, was, I took a break to run. Something hit me. I got a lot of ideas when I'm working out. Anybody here, just that fresh air sometimes gives you some ideas, gives you focus, brings you clarity. At the time, we were on conference call after conference call. Hmm. At the time, I was hearing our conference calls, we on calls to fix things, but sometimes those calls can sound like complaints. Maybe you don't, you not hear me. Sometimes when we're, we, we are in the mode of trying to fix something, it can come across as we are complaining. And then I had to think back. I texted my wife. I said, what if our ancestors, what if our ancestors let the same stuff that's stopping us stop them? Where would we be today? I mean, really, look at what we have. We are practically spoon feeding multi million dollar opportunities every single day. What if, what if Harry Tubman said, you know what? You know, them people tripping. I thought I wanted to save them. Now I'm, I'm good. I'm free. They'll get out. I don't like their attitude. If I got to do another motivational speech of why y'all need to be free, I'm going to leave y'all with master. <laughs> do y'all realize how crazy we sound sometimes with a multi-million dollar opportunity? And you talking about, I thought nationals was, was going to be $100, it's 119 <laughs> I ain't talking to nobody right now. Listen, I'm just saying. 
Do you understand how foolish it sounds when you've already got proven multi-million dollar earners who have done exactly what you've done? Same compensation plan. Worse, see, worse actually compensation when we were in with a, with a CV of $4 doing the same thing at a higher level, but you out there with the same opportunity, you say, you know what? I can't believe this. Why we got to go to New Orleans again? Do you understand how foolish it sounds if Harriet Tubman was sitting there thinking these same things? You have to think about what people years from now will be thinking about your effort. I know I've been blessed. Absolutely 100% confident that God said it was meant to be for me to find my wife. Met her when I was 12, met her again at 32. Didn't see her from the time we were 13 all the way up until 32. She hit me up. At the time, I was going through a lot. My business had closed. I had just finished sleeping in my car for a few months. The life I used to have, it was all stripped from me. But at that same time, I woke up and said, you know what? I'm still here. <laughs> After all that, you did. <laughs> sleeping in your car, taking showers at the YMCA. Bro, you still here? You healthy? You smile? I laughed in my car. Honda Accord, fully equipped though. <laughs> you, know, you ain't gonna play me, all right? I was doing it, okay? And I was sitting there laughing. I had back pain, I'm laughing. How the message this morning from CC and Selena Richards, they said, listen, even when you're going through that storm, you gotta find that joy. And I'm sitting there like, man, if the YMCA, I got to take a shower in there, I got to act like I'm playing basketball, go in there and take a shower, then put my clothes on, it kind of wrinkled, let me run them in the shower, y'all know this part, let me run them in the shower to get the wrinkles out in the shower, so then when I go back out to this event, to this meeting where I'm trying to impress people that I can be their business partner, I'm going to look presentable. But see, when I was going through all that, I was like, you know what, it's going to purpose to all this, I just ain't figured it out. It's a reason why I'm going through this. And all the blame isn't on somebody else. It was 100% my fault. Whose fault was it? It's your, yeah, you got to take responsibility for it. How? What if this young lady right now who was a reporter in the city of Baltimore. See, y'all don't know that Oprah. Y'all like the made up Weight Watchers. Magazine only, multi-billionaire. That's the one y'all like, what, they told her she was too ugly. Guess what, some of y'all ugly. I'm ugly. What you gonna do about it? You either gonna get over it or you're not. Control what you can control. Somebody tell me ugly, I was like, dang. I don't know what I can do about that. <laughs> You got to keep moving at some point, right? Today, multi-billionaire, what if she would have let the people who sexually harassed her, hmm, the people told her she was too ugly for TV, but now she has a network, the Oprah Winfrey Network, O-W-N, she owns this. But you have to understand that sometimes the things that you're, we're going through, we ain't really struggling for real. Come on, y'all. Can we, can we skip complaining for 30 days? Can I challenge you to come up with a solution before the problem, before you get a problem to your upline for the next 30 days? Can I challenge you before you call Nicole and say, Nicole, this isn't working. How can you recruit and I can't? Figure out what your problem is first. Bring it to her. Can y'all do that for me? Check this out. It's one more guy. The problem is you don't understand that this is the man that created everything else. It was the sacrifice. Do you understand he got death threats on a regular basis? Death threats. You haven't had death threats once you go to somebody's house for a PBI. They just told you, no, nah, I don't want to do it. <laughs> they ain't say, I'm going to kill you if you don't leave out of here. Do you 
understand how foolish you sound when you are accepting that little baby rejection. And he kept marching, he kept walking, he kept fighting. He had a missed attempt at death. Someone tried to kill him and missed the first time. Some of y'all don't know this part. What if he gave up? I want you to ask yourself, what if you gave up? What if you let the obstacle that was in your way slow you down? What will your family think about everything that you're doing right now? They're going to say it's all a waste. When people say, and I respectfully, I want to say it's respectfully because everybody has a different journey. Respectfully, I never thought about quitting. I understand, I understand why people who thought about it did. Trust me, I do. I never thought about it. Because I know it's only one solution for me, and that's result. If they're still paying out a cab bonus, a team bonus, and a residual check when I enroll a partner and a customer, I'm going to still go. Some of y'all don't get this. As long as they keep paying this, I'm going to keep going. If the plug is pulled, yeah, I get it. But while we still rolling, you're going to find me in the trenches. I don't need applause right now. I need you to understand this is focus time right now, okay? Because the thoughts of quitting are going to slow you down. And your legacy, your last name, the future of your family does not have time for your excuses. Do you think they care about the conversations about when your business almost failed? Do you think they care? Do you think the only thing that really matters to them right now is what you did? Are you going to be the grandmother, grandfather on the mantle? Did you provide the family trust? Did you create the family trust? Did you do any of that? Or did you say, man, we was almost on to something? Man, you know, them crazy co-founders, this and that. Are you going to blame everybody else and quit? I don't have time for it. Result or nothing. This is the Martin Luther King we know. Nobel Peace Prize. Civil rights leader. Change all of our lives. We wouldn't even be able to sit together in this convention center if it wasn't for the actions of this man and many more. Thank God that he didn't give up when times got rough. I want to share with you guys something really quick. It's a quick video. I hope this puts this all in perspective so we can collectively move forward. Are you with me? So uh, video, if we can, if we can, uh, we have this up an right opportunity now. to make America a better nation. And I want to thank God once more for allowing me to be here with you. You know, several years ago, I was in New York City autographing the first book that I had written. And while sitting there autographing books, a demented black woman came up. The only question I heard from her was, Are you Martin Luther King? And I was looking down writing and I said, yes. And the next minute I felt something beating on my chest. Before I knew it, I had been stabbed by this demented woman. I was rushed to Harlem Hospital. It was a dark Saturday afternoon. That blade had gone through and the x-rays revealed that the tip of the blade was on the edge of my aorta, the main artery. And once that's punctured, you're drowned in your own blood. That's the end of you. It came out in the New York Times the next morning that if I had merely sneezed, I would have died. Well, about four days later, they allowed me after the operation, after my chest had been opened and the blade had been taken out, to move around in the wheelchair in the hospital. They allowed me to read some of the mail that came in and from all over, the states and the world, kind letters came in. I read a few, but one of them I will never forget. I had received one from the president and the vice president. I've forgotten what those telegrams said. I'd received a visit and a letter from the governor of New York, but I've forgotten what that 
letter said. Yes. But there was another letter that came from a little girl, a young girl, who was a student at the White Plains High School. And I looked at that letter, and I'll never forget it. It said simply, Dear Dr. King, I am a ninth grade student at the White Plains High School. She said, while it should not matter, I would like to mention that I'm a white girl. I read in the paper of your misfortune and of your suffering. And I read that if you had sneezed, you would have died. I'm simply writing you to say that I'm so happy that you didn't sneeze. And I want to say tonight, I want to say tonight that I too am happy that I didn't sneeze because if I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1960 when students all over the South started sitting in at lunch counters. And I knew that as they were sitting in, they were really standing up for the best in the American dream and taking the whole nation back to those great wells of democracy which were dug deep by the founding fathers in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1961 when we decided to take a ride for freedom and ended segregation in interstate travel. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1962 when Negroes in all Bennett, Georgia decided to straighten their backs up. And whenever men and women straighten their backs up, they are going somewhere because a man can't ride your back unless it is bent. If I had sneezed, If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been here in 1963. The black people of Birmingham, Alabama, aroused the conscience of this nation and brought into being the Civil Rights Bill. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have had a chance later that year in August to try to tell America about a dream that I had had. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been down in Selma, Alabama to see the great movement there if I had sneezed. I wouldn't have been in Memphis to see a community rally around those brothers and sisters who are suffering. I'm so happy that I didn't sneeze. And they were telling me. Now it doesn't matter now. It really doesn't matter what happens now. I left Atlanta this morning and as we got started on the plane, there were six of us. The pilot said over the public address system, we are sorry for the delay. But we have Dr. Martin Luther King on the plane. And to be sure that all of the bags were checked. And to be sure that nothing would be wrong on the plane, we had to check out everything carefully. And we've had the plane protected and guarded all night. And then I got into Memphis. And some began to say the threats. I talk about the threats that were out. Uh, what would happen to me from some of our sick white brothers. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. And I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life, longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And 
I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. It's time, y'all. It's time, y'all. We have something special to it right here. Give me the lights. Give me the lights. We have something special right now. I walk out of my house most days, every five, six days a week, with the intention with nothing else is to grow my business and put on for my family. Every day I'm not successful, but every day I go out there with the absolute intention that I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going until I win. They are more important than any excuse I can think of. They mean more to me than anything else. So I get up when I'm tired. I get up when something's wrong. Sometimes we're not in the same place. Sometimes my wife, believe it or not, we have differences. We disagree. Do you know how hard it is for me to go out when I know that we aren't on the same page? Don't matter. I still got to keep going. Got to keep rolling. Because at the end of the day, I look up and I say, you know what? This is bigger than any issue that we have personally. We've been blessed with the gift, and unless we pass it forward, we're wasting that blessing. So let me get into this real quick. I want to talk to you about process over product. What I'm going to talk to you about? The impossible seems simple when the routine is executed well over time. This ain't on the screen, y'all. You're going to have to listen. I want you to take from this presentation more than what you capture on your screenshots. I want to get in here. I want to get right here in your heart because the screenshots will disappear. You'll lose the phone. Something will happen, but this right here is going to stay. Impossible becomes simple when the routine is executed well over time. If you don't get that part, that's where your fear comes in. I remember watching Thomas Felder shoot up through the company. And for a minute, I thought to myself, man, this guy has supernatural powers. I'm busting my butt too. He's signing up 10 reps at one time, I'm signing up one. You probably are feeling the same way about getting to the top of this company. Some people seem like they're going so much faster. But only difference between where I was and where he was was he was executing a routine very well over time. I saw the end, which looked like the beginning. That was the day he enrolled in Five Links. But he had been an attorney for years. So I want you guys to understand is that you have to start executing on this process. I got big news for you. It's going to maybe put a little bit of fear into you. CBD is going to have a great run. Oh, a great run. We're going to make millions of dollars. Oh, Y'all better claim it. We're going to make millions of dollars with CBD. Somebody in this room is going to do over $1 million in a month and then do it again and again and again. It's going to happen. See, the problem is you think that's far-fetched. I think that that is executing a routine well over time. If, I, if you switch the way you look at difficult, difficult becomes simple. When you tell me I can't do it, I laugh. Because the only person can tell me I can't is me. Because I know what I'm willing to put into it. So yeah, if I say, hey, I ain't trying to put the time in to do all that, I ain't going to be able to do it. But if you sit there and say that's a goal, it's humanly possible to get done, all you have to do is put the time and the effort into it, it can get done. So guys, I want you to see this. The backbone of greatness is the routine. You see the speakers and the presenters and the top leaders in front of you now say, wow, they look so good. They talk on the main stage. They got fancy suits on. Man, they all done out there nice. They got nice cars, nice homes, all that stuff. What you should be looking into is their process. 
What's in that bank account is a result of their process. So what I was trying to pick their brains on, what are you doing on a day-to-day basis? Miss me with the house and the car. I like that. I'm a shark. I love that stuff. But I need to figure out how many PBRs is that? Can you give me a number? What is your work ethic like? Are you one of those work till you stop, work till you pass out? Just let me know. I need to know what it is. I can pass out too. <laughs> or you somebody who's just doing two hours and you just got a really good system within that two hours. I just needed to know what the best plan of action was. The greatness is really in the routine. But your process will duplicate. The products will have a lifespan. Eventually, CBD will run its course. We hope it's 25, 30 years from now. We hope we built empires off of it. New products will come on board. But in that time frame, the process must stay the same. So if you get the process down and use a product like CBD, you can apply anywhere. My confidence don't come from CBD. Mine comes from, I'm going to put this pressure on them the same way I've been doing it over and over and over again. The product is better, great, we're going to make more money. But some of you are not getting involved in a process. You were just hyped about a product. That hype is going to wear off. When your cousin gets in another CBD company, they start doing better than you. Ooh. When Walgreens price come out and it challenges yours, ooh. You think I'm scared? We can build a Walgreens on every block. We're going to get the CBD off. Our process is going to beat theirs. Many of you don't know, I campaigned for Barack Obama. I was one of his campaign leaders. We travel all over the country. I remember going to Columbia, South Carolina, to campaign for Barack Obama, knocking on doors. I want you to hear this. He was not the favorite to win the presidency. They thought it was a joke, thought he was a long shot. I'm knocking on doors. I'm going to door to door. My, my father's a politician, and we got into the campaign with Barack Obama I'm knocking on doors. I realized in my week that I spent in Columbia leading up to the rally in, in South Carolina, we had knocked on doors three to four times more than the competition. This is still in a Democratic primary. So at this time, I'm thinking to myself, he's not just some guy who speaks well. He's outworking them. It hit me. I said, man, this guy has no chance of losing. The lady, I came to her door. She said, son, this is my third time seeing you this week. I said, lady, I'm, looking, I'm just trying to help the man get the present. She said, you got my vote. Are you hungry? He getting votes and we getting meals. I said, this man is amazing. But I realized at that time he was just doing more. He was, had a better process. He had a better system. I've been on campaigns before, but this is my first time when we work with Barack. Understand the process will duplicate. So for you guys, you got to teach that routine. Teaching that routine is the key to generational wealth. You see it. The process won't fail us, y'all. The process won't fail us. The only thing that's going to fail is when you quit. I remember people used to say that all the time. You only lose if you quit. You only lose if you quit. You only lose if you quit. Then they quit. <laughs> I'm like, but bro, never mind. I seen people on the stage, they preach, I'm a man of God, this is it, this is the best thing ever. I'm going to hurt somebody's feeling with this because you might like them or love them, guess what, I still do. But when it comes to this opportunity, I got to work with who's here. I can love y'all wherever y'all at, but right now, I don't care who you are, you want to work this business, you have it, but don't lead people down the wrong path knowing you ain't serious. I'm here when it's struggling time. Oh, I'm going to pick up the check when it's time to shine too. But I didn't skip the struggle. Now they skipping companies. Boop, 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 like skipping rocks. They just... You can't skip the struggle and expect to be there when it's time to cash the checks. I'm just telling you, I've been there. I slept in my car. I've been beat up walking to school. I've been through all that just for me to say, hey, God, what's going on? He said, listen, I was putting you through something. I just needed you to prove to me that you were worthy. I was going to bring you the wife. I was going to bring you the woman of your dreams, but you had to prove to me you were worthy. I was going to give you a beautiful family, but you had to prove to me that you were worthy. I was going to give you a beautiful home and cars and let you travel the entire world, but you had to prove to me that you were worthy. 
The problem is you can't quit and prove yourself at the same damn time. So when it gets hard, we don't quit. We strap up. We ready. We ready to go. I had to tighten my belt a few times. I missed a few minutes. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'll be damn sure I ain't never going to quit. So what you got to understand is I ain't talking about quitting on five links. I'm talking about quitting on myself. Y'all can only quit on five links because you quit on yourself first. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. I'm too good to quit on me. Look to your neighbor and say, I love me some me. If you don't love yourself, man, you lost, man. I'm going to let you know right now. I want to bring this back, y'all. Everybody say, bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. The process never fails, y'all. We used to play baseball a lot in five links. We made a whole lot of money. Who made some money playing baseball in five links? And I ain't talking about neighborhood softball. I ain't talking about with the wiffle ball bat. I'm talking about we walked and we carried a big stick. You know why? Because we were playing five links baseball. Now I want to show you guys what oxygen baseball is going to look like. It's a new process in town, y'all. This is a time where I want you to take pictures. I want you to pay attention. I want you to take notes because we got to reteach the process. The reason why we're having trouble is because, okay, we got some training, but we didn't know how to apply it. We got hyped up, and when we got faced with that opposition, we lost it. So let me give you some of the process really quick. First base. You guys, anybody here familiar with baseball? Let me, let me, let me kind of amplify this for you. Last two weeks ago, the biggest sports contract of, in history, $430 million was signed in the sport of baseball. To a guy who gets out, he, he loses more than he wins. He gets up the bat 10 times and, and hits the ball two or three times out of 10. Some of y'all got a better batting average than he does. And he still got a $430 million contract. Son, baseball practice starts next week. <laughs> but it's a simple system. So what happens when you get a hit? You got a prospect. The first thing you're going to do is what? You're going to do what? Peak interest. Then you're going to move people to action. I'm going to show you what it means in a minute. And then from there, you're going to edify your expert, do a three-way call. And after that, you're going to put them in a system. You're going to launch their business. You're going to set that PBR. Are you with me? Let's look at this now. Let's look at the detail. I'm going to give you the game right now. i got a short time. I'm going to give you the game right now. Humbly stated, in the last month, the month of February, I think the month of December, I had better recruiting months than I ever had in my run to, to platinum. Better recruiting. Now, my team had did some bigger numbers, but recruiting, personal recruiting, we had better numbers. What, was we, what were we doing? What was I doing different? Let me be the example. Tashina's always big on, you can't tell somebody else to do something unless you did it first. Well, you know that one hurts when she says that? Can't tell them to do it if you ain't do it first. I'm like... I'm about to do something. No, you ain't do it yet. You got you to gotta do it yourself. I said, okay, I got something for y'all. I'm going to go out and recruit these people myself. My team, I love y'all, but right now I got to do something for me. Hmm. You, somebody need to take this attitude. Don't forget, don't get the screen and forget the attitude. You have to do it yourself first. You do it yourself, you can prove it to your team. First step I did when I piqued somebody's interest. Hey, John, look, check this CBD industry overview out with Dr. Oz. I sent him the, the video. The video is up, it was on my website. Let me give a shout out to, where is he? Where is, where is, who created the video? Where is, I can't see, I can't see, I'm looking for it, right? Tillman Doe, where's Tillman, where's Tillman? He out there making a new video right now, probably, right? <laughs> I didn't make the video. Dr. Oz shot it, then Tillman added some extra good stuff to it. You can find it on Tillman's website, my website, whatever, it's up there, YouTube. I sent them a Dr. Oz video that piques their interest into the business. Oh my gosh, CBD is $22 billion. It's helping people with every single thing. Oh my gosh, it's the next big thing. Yes, I just found out too. I said, listen, I'm going to send you the same video that I saw about a year and a half ago. Actually, about six months ago when the video came out that showed me the industry of CBD. I piqued their interest. I sent them the information. Let me know this will give you a good understanding of the potential of the CBD industry. They're interested. They hit me back. Hey, Kurt. 
I'm interested. Show me more. Everybody say, show me more. So the next thing I got to do is I got to move them to action. Don't fumble the ball. Don't get somebody's interest peaked and do nothing. You're making Facebook videos right now. That's peaking their interest. You're recording presentations. You're in the line. You're getting excited. You're taking pictures with platinums. You're doing all the right things, but don't fumble the ball right there. At this point, now you got to move them to action. The first and the best thing is to get them to a PBR. The process didn't change. It's the product. Don't look at me like PBR is a new word to y'all, a new acronym. You can call it what you want it, CBD, party, community, awareness, intelligence, what is it now? What is it? Proud, man, they got so many names for this thing. Call it what you want. Get somebody to the event. Are you with me? CBD, great. The process, better. Are you with me? Business opportunity event, community awareness event, or one-on-one -on -one if you're good at it. Online overview, Tupac said he did a webinar 11 years straight on Monday night. You know at least one night a week is going to be a webinar. I'm, I'm not going to bet against him missing one. Or we have it in the app. I use the My Five Links Legacy app religiously. Let me give you this again, y'all. I use this app out of the last 20 people I recruited, 14 of them came in through the app. Personal recruit. I use the app because I'm recruiting too many. I'm, I'm prospecting too many people to keep up with it. I'm too mobile. I travel too much to have it all down organized. Yes, I have paper. Yes, I have pen and pad, but that app saves me because I'm not the most organized. Ask my wife. So I understand now is that now you got these different things. Now I moved them to action. They see the video. Great. They say, man, listen, that makes a lot of sense. I got a few questions about how to get my business started. This is where you fumble the ball right here again. You are, I got this, I'm, I'm, man, I got this. What's your question? The first question is easy. How much does it cost to get in my business? Tell them, 550 gets you in, get you $700 worth of product, right? Tell them all the info they wanna hear. Oh, by the way, it's gonna be 250 a month. 199 gets you more product coming in every single month, bundled up. $50 for your website. Keep the process going. You tell them all that stuff. The next question is, oh, before I get started, can you tell me uh, what's the name of the farm where CBD is grown for your company? <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't know that. <laughs> the second question is the real one. The first one was easy. Edify your expert. Let your upline handle the tough question. Your qualified upline. Not the person who started a day before you. You started on January 1st, they saw on January 2nd, they're not qualified just yet. Get somebody else, is that okay? So they get them to the three-way call, you wanna edify. We've heard this process before, they look, they're a documented leader. He or she knows 100% about the information. He or she knows how to make money, they love to have fun and has a passion for helping others. Get them to the three-way call and hit mute. That hitting mute has got to be the most powerful part of this process. Shout out to all my IMRs helping diamonds through a three-way call. I know you're a diamond, but I'm, let, me, let me just say one more thing. If you don't shut up and let me finish. Let your certified, qualified upline finish the call. It's a process. I know they got some rebuttals. I can hear the objection, but I'm walking them through the process. Are you with me? It's a method to the madness. Press the mute button and look at it, but don't touch it. Your parents ever tell you that when you went to the store? Look, but don't touch. Ooh, I wanna say something. Kurt, could you hurry up and get, close them out? Just wait, I got this. Home base. The next one. Now they call you up and say, look, I'm serious about this. I want this to work. I'm ready to get started. The next thing you gotta do is you have to close. This is the most important part. Your upline gave you an alley-oop, but for me, let me switch sports. Alley-oop, put it right at the rim so you could dunk it, but you gotta do the rest. Your upline might give you a bone, throw your bone every once in a while, but you gotta do the rest. So, Closing language, are y'all ready? 
Listen to this. Record this. That's fine. Closing language. So, Jerome, listen, I know you got off the call with, uh, with Tashina. Listen, she's tops in the biz. She knows everything. I didn't even want to say anything while she was talking. But listen, Jerome, right now we can get you into this CBD business right now. By the way, it's $22 billion coming over the next three years. I want to make sure we get in to corner the market before all the cheap CBD companies start to saturate the market. Jerome said, yes, let's go. I said, listen, pull out your card, Jerome. Let's get started today. Does your card start with a four or a five? Wrong, like, shoot, what the, four, 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 three, two. How did you know it was a four, all right? It was a Visa or MasterCard? That's all I needed to know. I only had one question for it. Was it four or five? Make sure they have the $250 subscription bundle. That's PDM plus the $199 bundle at least. Get them the $299 bundle if they're ready to take it serious. How do you, how do you, what is the verbiage? Let me give you the verbiage for that. So I'm talking to somebody about the bundle, I say, listen up, your $700, $700 worth of product is going to run out very soon. People are going to start buying it up. So what I want you to do is click this button so you can get at least $200 worth of product coming in on your 30th day so you have more product and you don't miss out any samples. Samples are what get you sales. Oh. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I used to own a nightclub. At the minimum, my, my worst month, it was a $17,000 a month hit. I had to spend at least $17,000 just to keep the lights on, keep my employees in the building. You're talking about $250. <laughs> That's funny. $250. $250? Or $250,000. I'm trying to figure out what you're talking about. Is it $250 for me to get part of a $22 billion industry? Hey, take this $250, man. Come on. Stop playing with me. By the way, you have access to get your wholesale order right now. You can go online and get your wholesale order as soon as your process, your car goes through. Get this. Next thing I want to do is I want to sit down with you and go over your game plan. Call it the playbook. Call it the game plan. Call it the quick start. I want to go over your game plan. Don't miss the game plan. Set up the event. Set up the PBR. Don't set the PBR up in 10 days. Set it up in 3 to 5. Don't set it up in 10 days. Set it up in 3 to 5. See, y'all were good when I was hyping. I was screaming at y'all. I'm giving you a million dollars worth of information right now. Wake up! In the back right there. Wake up! Nah, and now you up, but she ain't. Listen, wake up. <laughs> Somebody in the back, wake up. Everybody stand up real quick. We got to stand. DJ, I need a little bit of music right now because this is the main part they got to take home with this. This is the part you need to wake up with. When I close the deal, I have an opportunity in my hand. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Listen, y'all, here it is right here at the end. Thank you, DJ. Listen, right here. What you have to do is you gotta make sure you quick start your folks. Show them how to walk through the back office. Set the event up. Get everybody going on this. This is what's gonna help you duplicate your business. Remember, impossible becomes simple when the process is executed well over time. This is executing the process well over time. Thank you, DJ, you can cut the music real quick. Sit back down real quick. I hit it on something right now, but I want to jump back into this. I got to switch this up. Right now, we have some obstacles. I talked about it in my last training on the main stage. I want to tell you about this again. There are some things that are holding you back from success. I got some people who made some excuses. If that's you right now, I want you to look to, look to your partner, say, I'm done with excuses. Look to the other side, say, I'm done with excuses. Just so you know, when you're IMR, the excuses are, are easy to get over. When you get to the top level, you hit all the positions, oh, they start to get bigger. It's harder. It's tough. I'm looking at some of my leaders right now, and I know they're going through a lot. They're holding on to thousands of people. They got the responsibility to make sure thousands of people stay motivated every single day to do their business and build their own legacies. Give it up for your top level leaders, your SVPs, your Platinums, your Diamonds. But I know y'all, it's hard. But I'm gonna let us know we all gonna stick together, we're gonna work this thing out. Shout out to my brother Derek, my sister, uh, Cynthia Kennedy. Let's give it up for them really quick. Top producers, y'all. I don't know who needs to hear this in the back of me, but they need to be on the stage next convention. I said it. 
I love y'all, but we got to award people when they're doing their thing. Man, let's give it for them one more time. Congratulations, y'all. But right now, there's going to be a key to our success. Our key to our success is coming together as a family. Our key to success is being there for your sister, for your brother. That's going to be our key. You want to know what our real key is? It's not the product, the process, but it's the family, the family environment. When I look up and I say, I saw Tremaine do something for Trevor. He said, man, I'll do anything for my big brother. That's what's going to win. <laughs> Trevor had poured into that man so much, and he had, listen, he said, I'll do anything for that man as my big brother. That's what's going to win. It's the culture that is the most expensive thing that's the most valuable thing that we have is our culture we have to stay connected we have to stay family I've been over backwards for y'all I promise you guys but you got to make sure that you do the same for your partners you can't let any little thing come between your success I'm talking to somebody but I'm almost scared to say what I really want to say guys we are bickering over some small stuff don't look down at your phone right now I'm talking to you Somebody right now, you are letting someone else hold your business back? We got to discuss this. We got to bring this up, y'all. I was going to call the names out of some people I know, but I think it might be a bad idea. And it's not a joking matter because I really love these people and I want to make sure that they are in connection with each other. Right now, you are going through something. It's going to take everything you can you need everything to get to the top. You don't need just, you need everything working. You need everything clicking. We talked about we're operating at 10%. Well, that 100% looks like family. The 100% looks like process is working right. The 100% works like the product is working right. The 100% means everybody's traveling and working and, and grinding all at the same time. All engines, are, all cylinders are clicking at the same time. We don't have time for the drama. I ask you privately to get with that person in the room right now you got a problem with. Get over it. I challenge you right now to build with that person you know is doing well, if it's your upline, if it's your sideline, whatever it is, I want, we, we gotta come together. And we gotta build this thing right. To, when we get to Atlantic City, we are going to have 5,000 people at the next yeah. event. Yeah. I gotta build this up for you guys, I'm, I'm out of time, I'm out of time, I got one minute left, listen. When we get to Atlantic City, 5,000 people means that everybody in this room has got a team with them. It means that everybody here is taking this business serious. You're starting right now, and we're going to build up Atlantic City right now. Who is ready to get to Atlantic City? I saw a line outside of almost 1,000 people in line over the last day and a half to get product. Somebody told me when we did the power hour for nationals, it was kind of slow. Something not adding up. You can stand in line and buy the product, but you're not going to stand in line to sign up for the next event where you know this is supposed to be your SVP celebration coming up. I'm going off the course. I don't care what's going on back there. Listen to this right now. I need some of those applications for nationals right now. This ain't part of my training. Give me some of those. Give me some of those. Oh, yeah, I need to, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take that. I'm going to call this one out first real quick. Give me some of those. All right, listen up. Right now, right now, we're not going to take this thing serious. I need, uh, I need two people. I need um, Katrina, come here, please. All right. No, 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 no. I need, I need one more. I need, I need, another, I need, I need, um, I need Lanier. Lanier Evans. Come up here. Katrina, I need you up on the stage with me. Lanier Evans, you here? Saw her somewhere. There we go. Hold on, before I go on this, before I go on this, I listen, let me shout out these two people. These are my sisters right here. <sighs> can I talk to y'all? Can I be honest for a second? These two ladies right here work their business very hard. Sometimes they have great success. Sometimes it's not what they want. They struggle sometimes. Every time, me and my wife, we're going to be there for y'all, Right? 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 <laughs> but I need y'all to help me lead the rest of the women 
because my wife has been leading for a very long time. But I need y'all to come together and help because right now, as Trevor put it best in his talk the other day, it's the women that are going to change this business. As I collect these national convention tickets, what I want definitely real quick is um, I just want y'all to look to these women right now because I'm going to put them on the spot, all right? That they're going to be top producers. They're going to be walking the stage as top level SVPs. But I need us, and this is just representative of all of us, I need us to come together, all right? I need my sisters to work hand in hand. I need my sisters to rise above any issues that they're going to face in that world and come together and make this thing big. I need my sisters to stand up right now and say there's nothing that's going to come between us and our family. There's no issue involved that's going to let us slow down. I respect y'all. I wouldn't have called y'all up here. I love y'all. And I'm a married man. I love y'all like sisters. Are y'all with me? Yeah. I'm going to break my neck and my back for y'all to make sure y'all are successful. But I need y'all to come together. I need y'all to be the leaders to lead these women. The leaders right here have been doing it for a long time. It's time we got we to pass the baton. I need more out of you. I need more. I know it's hard, but I'm going to be there every step of the way. I promise you I will. But I need y'all ladies to do this. Can I ask you, and yes, I'm asking in front of all these people. Can y'all come together and lead this thing? Yes. Can y'all look above any issues you have with anybody in the world and say, you know what, Kurt, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And they, they, they cussing at me on the inside because I know I'm good. But big bro said what big bro said. I need y'all to lead this thing. Lanier, Katrina, can y'all lead this thing for me? I love y'all, I love y'all. Please give it up for Katrina Evans and uh, Katrina Vaughn and Lanier Evans, y'all.